Hello, my name is Tom Schaefer. I'm pastor of Faith United Lutheran Church in Toledo, Ohio. And this is Easter Sunday, the resurrection of our Lord, the most important celebration in the Christian church, because it is what our faith rests upon. Welcome to Faith United Online. This is our reading for this Easter Sunday. It comes from the Gospel according to St. Luke, the 24th chapter. But on the first day of the week at early dawn, they came to the tomb, taking the spices they had prepared. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they went in, they did not find a body. While they were perplexed about this, suddenly two men in dazzling clothes stood beside them. The women were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee that the Son of Man must be handed over to sinners and be crucified and on the third day rise again. Then they remembered his words, and returning from the tomb, they told all this to the eleven and to all the rest. Now it was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the other women with them who told this to the apostles. But these words seemed to them an idle tale, and they did not believe them. But Peter got up and ran to the tomb. Stooping and looking in, he saw the linen clothes by themselves. Then he went home amazed at what had happened. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, what a year. We probably have all had our different memories of uh, when we realized things were serious with the pandemic. For me, I'm a sports guy and I was watching some NBA basketball when suddenly, right at the beginning of the game, they announced that the NBA was suspended until further notice. That's when I was like, oh wow, this is pretty serious when a $9 billion industry uh, pulls the plug on their season, you know things are getting pretty serious. Even then though, I didn't really think I would be delivering my Easter sermon from the confines of my living room while progressively learning how to record and edit video which is what happened in 2020. Back in 1985, when I went to seminary, there was definitely no classes on video production or live streaming a worship service for pastors. But today it's something that the vast majority of pastors I, I know, know a thing or two about. No, well, not without our mistakes. If you have been watching our YouTube channel for any length of time, you will know that I have had my share of mistakes. I've put the wrong words in for a hymn. I've accidentally left in video. I meant to edit, edit out. I've forgotten to put video in. And I have done some very sketchy cutting and pasting pretty recently, in fact, for that one. Thankfully, I haven't had a really big faux pas, but not everybody can say that. For instance, a friend of mine went all out on recording a Christmas Eve service only to realize after they had posted the video for all the world to see that they had forgotten to turn the mics on for the worship. There was no sound. But despite all of that, the church has survived. I've survived you have survived. That's something not everything or every person can say, though. Some of you know that I was in the final steps of closing a business in February of 2020. It was painful because I had poured a lot of blood, sweat, and tears into that business. 
but I can remember that by the summer of 2020, that for the first time I thought, I'm glad we're closed. Because I could only imagine the stress of trying to keep a small business open that relies on customers and how horrible that stress would have been. And of course, a lot of businesses have not survived. Just a week ago, the head of the Small Business Administration reported that 400,000 businesses have closed, many of those permanently, in the last year. And of course, we know there are people who haven't survived. All of that is what makes this Easter so important. What makes the message of Easter, the truth of Easter, such an important source of strength and hope in difficult times? When Jesus died, his followers felt a depth of despair that must have seemed incapacitating. They thought Jesus was the Messiah. During the time that they had spent with him, they had seen him cast out demons, heal the sick, even raise the dead. The expectations upon ar arriving at Jerusalem were huge. He was supposed to uh, finally ascend to power. The disciples were arguing with each other about who would get the best cabinet positions. Then within a week of arriving, Jesus was arrested, tortured, and crucified. Their world had come crashing down around them. Of course, Jesus had told them this would happen, and he told them that after three days he would rise from the dead. But when things are that bad, when life goes horribly wrong, it can become impossible to believe in the good that may happen in the midst of the bad that is happening. That's where the disciples found themselves on that Sunday morning, hiding away, isolated, staying out of the public in fear for their own lives. When Jesus had died, there had not been any time to prepare his body for burial. So now the women who followed Jesus, who were such a large part of his ministry, set out to make that right, to honor him in his death as they had in his life. Little did they know they were about to be asked a question that would forever change the way they look at the world. They arrive to find the massive stone rolled away from the tomb. And when they entered the tomb, they saw that Jesus' body was missing and there were two angelic beings standing there. But rather than creating hope in them. This just created more fear. Because you see, that's what happens when all we can see, all we can focus on is the bad that is happening around us. But that's when the angels ask their question. Why do you look for the living among the dead? There it is. The angels reveal to them the misguided nature of what they do, of what we all do. Why do you look for the living among the dead? Jesus had told them he would rise from the dead, but they don't go to the cemetery looking for an empty tomb. They, they go there to complete a burial. They go expecting to find a tomb filled with broken dreams and shattered hopes, but the tomb is not full. It is empty. Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He is risen. Because things had gone so bad, they couldn't see the good that God was doing. I think we run the risk of doing this all the time. When things go wrong, we, we, we start to wonder. We, we, we start to doubt that God is even in control. And when that happens, we can start to lose faith. Some people lose it altogether. They look around the world and see everything that's happening. And they just can't believe that a good God exists. I once heard a world-renowned atheist say, 
how could there be a God in a world where children get cancer? And if there is a God that allows such things to happen, I don't want to worship him. I get the sentiment. It can be hard to have faith in this world. But that statement depends on believing that there is nothing in this world that lies outside our comprehension. Essentially, what that person was saying is, if I can't make sense of it, then it has to be wrong. Now, for many of us, it's not as drastic as losing our faith completely. But maybe we lose confidence. We begin to question if God has a plan. The Bible says that faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things unseen. Maybe sometimes I lack that conviction. In the end, the disciples didn't have that assurance, didn't have that conviction when Christ died on the cross. When they went to that tomb, it was beyond what they could even hope for and certainly beyond their comprehension. And this all happened even though Jesus had tried to prepare them for that moment. He told them this was how things were going to go down. He tried to make them understand that God's plans were not their plans. The idea that death could somehow lead to life was difficult to believe when all they could see was death. But that was God's plan to provide a way for all humanity to find life, abundant life, everlasting life. And it would come through this death. So the angels remind the women of this at the tomb. The angels say to them, remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee, the son of man must be delivered into the hands of sinners, be crucified, and on the third day be raised again. And the scriptures then say, then they remembered his words. The angels say, remember he told you this would happen. This is the way it needed to be. And this is why the resurrection is so important. St. Paul completely understands this when in the Bible, in his first letter to the Corinthians, the 15th chapter, he says this. Now, if Christ is proclaimed as raised from the dead, how can some of you say there is no resurrection of the dead? If there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ has not been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, then our proclamation has been in vain and your faith has been in vain. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have died. You see, the resurrection isn't just a happy ending to the story. Our entire faith hinges on it because if Jesus has just died, if the tomb is not empty, it would mean that he, everything he said, everything he did, everything he represented is dead. He couldn't pay the price for your sins because he's dead. He couldn't make a difference in your life now because he's dead, but he lives. His words are are as true today as they were then. Whoever believes in me will have eternal life, he said, because he lives. When you pray to Jesus, he answers because he told us, ask and it will be given to you, seek and you will find, knock and the door will be opened. For everyone who asks receives, the one who seeks finds, and to the one who knocks the door will be opened because he lives. When you ask for forgiveness for your sins, he can say to you, you're forgiven. And his sacrifice, his death on the cross is extended to you because he lives. Abundant life is yours because he lives. How are you 
looking for the living among the dead right now? In what ways may the circumstances of life be causing you to doubt the plan that God has? Because Easter is God's exclamation point ending the sentence, God always has a plan. Hear the good news. The tomb is empty. He is risen. He lives. I hope you are having a fantastic Easter. I hope that uh, as the, 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 the curtains start to be lift on this time of separation from one another, that maybe you're having some time to, to see some family that you haven't seen in a long time and, um, and to, to, to celebrate with them, to celebrate how life is coming out of death once again. And that in the midst of that, you'll take a moment to also celebrate that the tomb's empty, that he lives, that Jesus has risen, and that he is your savior. And that that will be a part of your Easter celebration as well. God bless you. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. And until next time, keep safe.